to understand a whole organism and how, it, how a whole organism is develops decompressed out of its genome and produces a wonderful competent animal that can react to its environment and affectations of, an, of a living being. And he really kicked off a worldwide effort that's been going on uh, for decades now. Say, well, let's just characterize the entire structure of the animal. Let's take advantage of microscopy and we'll, we'll, we'll do what, what big data used to mean, which is hiring lots of people to slice up very fine microscopy images and then trace, trace little circles around all of these pro fine processes. And what you get after doing this for literally 20 years is in 1986 a full connectome of the animal. So this is a graph representing all of the circuit connections between all of the neurons colored by the type of neuron in the animal. And now it's 2018 and we've stared at this diagram for 30 years. Decisions are made to go down one branch or the other. The ability to crawl forward, um, it will soon shortly pause. It has a very beautiful ability to reverse. It has the ability to turn. So at the simplest level, we can write down that as a sequence of behavioral output. And that becomes our output. We may ask, how does this, this, this system produce that? And to do that, we want to get into the brain. So here's a rendering of, um, of the seat of the that against each other, you get a trajectory that has order and structure, but variability. That is vaguely reminiscent of the structure that people, if you've ever read James Gleick's Chaos of the Lorenz Attractor, but a system that's chaotic, capable of sort of variable behavior, being, being able to maintain multiple stable states. And it turns out that where you are in this abstract space, this is one long string of spaghetti taken from one recording. This brain state goes through a number of different areas, and where you are in state space determines actually the animal's intent, whether it's trying to go forward or backward, or turn left or turn right. We can see that if we rotate that same plot, um, we're just looking at two, again, abstract dimensions, and we see that the colors correspond specifically to the kinds of moves that you see the animal execute on a plate. So we've connected behavior output to internal state to some low dimensional brain-wide state and that actually is quite different than the architecture that you see in a computer. You wouldn't see the same kind of brain or computer-wide signal if you started to do this on a chip. Um, but we're able to extract a topology uh, out of the brain state that represents the behavioral topology. And it kind of went away with, with evolution because people said, well, hold on, things don't have an intrinsic purpose. There's, there's no will in this, in this single-celled animal. Clearly, it's, it's just parts, it's just physics. Um, and it's evolution that has sort of created this, this false sense that there is a will. As we still, as biologists, use this functional intuition to, to, to go after things. We believe everything has a purpose. If something, you shake in a system and something falls out, you, you think that's a screw. And you think that screw had a purpose.